So, you know what? It's time for my take on the yellow paint debate. All right? You want my take on yellow paint? First, you might want to know what it is, because this is the internet. You're having a perfectly normal day, and you're thinking, I want to get mad about something. Well, let me just give you that. What else is the internet for anyways? Here's the take on yellow paint. There are a large number of games that try to do something called diegetic guidance for the player. Diegetic, first of all, is a great word to use if you just want to come across as a bit of a douchebag. So I'm glad to give you that gift right off the bat. Diegetic means it's in the world. You know when you're watching Mission Impossible and it goes dum, 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 dum. That's music that the audience can hear, but music that the people in the movie can't hear. Tom Cruise isn't diving off a building, believing in himself and Thetans. He's not doing that and hearing that song in his earbuds. We hear that. That is non-diegetic music. Whereas if he was in a diner having a cappuccino and they were playing some great song like Wonderwall, that would be diegetic because we can hear it and Tom Cruise can hear it. So in games, a non-diegetic form of guidance would be, gamer, you need to go, turn left, gamer, and I'm going to shoot an arrow out of your head pointing in the direction you need to go. That would be non-diegetic. But it kind of takes you out when all of a sudden you're hearing someone go, Snake, press the action button. It's weird. So doing something that is in-world and feels natural, a lot of developers want to go for. And a very common way to do this in, in terms of guiding is to do things with light. For instance, all the way down there, that's the most well-lit area. This is a diegetic signal to me to go to this area of the level. The most common thing that I've been seeing people get furious about on the internet lately is the idea of yellow paint. There's a number of games in the last few years that when they want a person to go from A to B, they will put yellow paint on thing B. If there's a mountain to climb up, well, let's have the rungs that you need to stick your hands into. Yellow paint, yellow paint, yellow paint, yellow paint, yellow paint. And I have, I have sort of two opinions on this, and I want to share both of them because this is my channel and I do as I please. First of all, look at these graphics in the... Ah, get me out of here. These graphics, things are very blocky and very chunky because this is the graphical capabilities at the time. So this ledge, for instance... Oh, my God. Get up there, Larry. Get up there. Anytime I see something that looks like this... It's very obvious to me that I can get up here. Very obvious to me. Because there's just not a lot of polygons, okay? But as you start getting into more realistic graphics, like here, and if you think about modern gen games, you have beautiful, realistic looking rocks up the side of a mountain. You'll have a room in a ruin like this that will have beautiful statues, and really cool, smooth, dynamic curves on the pillars and so on and so forth. So because you have such a realistic looking area, sometimes you lose out on the blunt obviousness of, oh, this is a square platform. I can hop up on that. And if you look at user testing, or actually if you have ever, you should just go try to track down someone testing a game before it's been launched. Well, they'll put the people in a room and the person will sit here, oh, okay, I'm ready to play. And they have like one of those um, single side mirrors where on my side is the player. It looks like a mirror, but on the other side, they can see right through it like it's an interrogation room. The player who's sitting there going, oh, huh, I wonder what I do. You would not believe how many players get stuck. And I don't mean stuck for 30 seconds. Ah, where do I go? Oh, here we go. I mean like 30 minutes sweating or I just I literally I want so badly I want so badly to advance but I don't know how to advance and then you slap yellow paint on there and the incidence rate of that drops precipitously and so in terms of defending a, um, a, a you know developers choices I think that that makes a lot of sense with realistic graphics where you don't have the blunt blockiness and simplicity of some of the shape language of these early 90s games. Yeah, make it look realistic and just give it a little bit of yellow or beam a light on there. There you go. And the second point, I'm glad Suicide Squid, you brought this up. 
is that designing for the lowest common denominator, I think that it is really important to understand what you're even trying to do with your game. Let's say that I am a story-driven game where I'm trying to get you, the player, to do some action but get drawn through an amazing, fulfilling, rich story. The pacing of dialogue can get really screwed if, quickly, we need to go this way, and you're supposed to go that way, climb up, all right, now, hurry, go over that way. It feels intense, it feels good. But if they go, quickly, follow me, and you go, wait, what? Where do, huh, wait, and then you spend 20 minutes trying to figure out where to go, and then you finally arrive on the platform, oh, thank God you're here, quickly, we gotta go. It's not, it, it, it feels weird. The pacing feels weird. And so if you want everyone to have the experience of hurry quickly, move, go, and got there. Now hurry quickly, move, go. You actually need to make it as crystal clear as possible where to go to ensure that you, the developer, actually are controlling the pacing in a way that you desire. And so there's lots of ways in which this principle of, I'm trying to create this experience for you, please just let me create the experience for you. Things like, um, games that have a very long tutorial. Oh, the tutorial of, uh, let me take uh, Total War Warhammer 3 that had a very long tutorial campaign that ended so you could start over and then actually play through the game. And I thought it was quite nice. I thought it was actually quite nice. Um, you could say, you know what? We're just gonna put that in the manual. But a lot of people would be like, dude, no, no, no. I, I don't want to like go to a manual or watch videos to teach myself. I want to kind of be guided through it. That is a choice of bringing someone through a bunch of systems and giving them some guided feel before you dump them into the game. Things like this. And I think that when it comes to this sort of like in-game guidance, I actually think it is a great question uh, for a developer to ask themselves of what even is the kind of game I want to create for myself. Because this is a game about exploring ruins. This is a game about going into a place where there's no human life, there's tons of mystery. Lara Croft doesn't know what's in here, and I, the player, don't know what's in here. And so having it be very spare, having it be very, you know, mysterious and getting lost a little bit, that actually feels consistent with the experience of this. But if I were playing a really story-driven Final Fantasy game, and I kept not being sure where to go, I think that for that kind of game, it's correct. And for this kind of game, I think too much guidance might actually feel incorrect. And so that's my rant. So at the end of the day, my actual opinion about yellow paint is most of the time, I think it's actually fine and justified. But for certain kinds of games and gameplay experiences, I think that if you're trying to lean into mystery or getting lost or giving players more agency or giving a sense of, yeah, like discomfort and confusion, games that want to feel more maze-like, like a Hollow Knight, stuff like that would take away from that experience.